Hi, okay. So we have seen uh, two important algorithms to solve nonlinear equations. So these were uh, bisection algorithm and uh, newton robson algorithm. So there are also many, of course, uh, applications of these or such algorithms in uh, finance. And one of them is actually finding the yield of the bond. And the other application is finding the implied volatility of an option. So uh, now I would like to introduce the Black-Scholes model, basically which derives a, a formula to price the um, European uh, call and put options. If you are not familiar with the Black-Scholes model, um, that's okay, because at the end of the day it's going to be a formula, it's just a mathematical equation, and you don't actually need a very deep understanding of the derivations in order to understand how we can obtain the implied volatility of an option. But I would like to give a very rough and brief idea and introduce the um, uh, fundamental uh, a few points and then we will talk about some applications. So first in the Black-Scholes model uh, basically um, we have the so-called Brownian motion process. So this process um, in this equation denoted by this WT, so we have our WT, so this is from time zero all the way to infinity, so this is our Brownian motion process. So basically this process has a few fundamental properties just to give you some idea. Uh, basically, it starts from zero. It is almost everywhere continuous process. So this means actually your stock price paths, this ST, is also going to be almost everywhere continuous because this part is only just deterministic component and the noise is coming from this WT. Another property is basically the WT because for some fixed time, T, if you tell me at what time you are going to generate this uh, Brownian motion process, basically you can simply generate a normal random variable with mean zero and the variance equals to T. And the third property is basically if you look at to the increments of Brownian motion, for example with some time step delta T, and if you compare this with the, the random variable at time t, which is wt, so these are independent. So basically the Brownian motion has this independent increments, uh, independent increments uh, property. Okay, And also if you take the difference of these increments, again you will have a normal distribution with the mean zero and the variance equals to the difference in time, which is delta t. So these uh, properties are important because using these properties actually we can simulate some realizations of this Brownian motion and therefore we can actually generate or simulate this stock price path. So since this uh, Brownian motion is exponentiated, we call this as the geometric uh, Brownian motion process uh, for the stock prices. Okay, so this is the fundamental structure in the Black-Scholes model. So if we want to simulate the stock price paths, in other words, we want to generate the evolution of the stock prices over time, and we want to replicate this such evolutions many, many times in our computer. And therefore, we can price actually a variety of options later on. So this will take us to the... Um, a topic on Monte Carlo simulation for option pricing, but we will talk about this later on. Right now we are interested basically in understanding the Black-Scholes formula and uh, as, as I mentioned later on we will see how we can run such simulations, but essentially the key here is being able to generate this randomness, so this is the noise that is replicating the Brownian motion process, and this is uh, done by sampling these standard normals, random, standard normal random variables, and by scaling them appropriately, we can actually replicate this Brownian motion and therefore we have the geometric Brownian motion as well. Okay, So if we do this, the picture looks something like this. You can see 
each color here represents uh, one stock price path. Okay, and we can replicate many stock price paths, and um, this helps us to price actually more complicated um, options as well. Anyway, basically, the European color put options are the very basic uh, type of financial derivatives in the market. And if you own a European call option, it gives the owner the right to buy the underlying stock at a future time. So this future time is called as the maturity of the option and denoted by this uh, as capital T. And the owner can buy this uh, underlying stock at this maturity capital T from the price, the so-called strike price K. Okay. So the, the rational agent, of course, exercise this option only if there is a positive payoff, right? So basically at the end, at the maturity, the payoff uh, for the owner of this option can be uh, described by this maximum of ST minus K versus zero. And on the other hand, if uh, you own a put option, that means you have the right to sell the stock underlying stock at the same future time capital T from the strike price K. Again, the rational investor would uh, exercise this uh, option at the maturity only if there's a positive payoff. So basically, positive payoff means if the stock price is actually below this strike price, I have a positive payoff and therefore I would uh, exercise this option. Okay, so this is the basic definition for the European call and put options. And finally, the Black-Scholes model um, uh, derives the uh, explicit solution for the price of the European call and put options. Okay, so for the European call option, the Black-Scholes formula tells us the price at time zero, which is we can consider that as, our, as the current time is given in terms of the current stock price S0 and these ND1 and ND2 these, the, the, these are the normal uh, cumulative distribution functions and basically these are evaluated at these two points D1 and D2 okay so here is how you can calculate this D1 and D2 and basically you also have this uh, discounted strike price so basically you are applying this discounting with the risk-free rate R in this case. Okay, so you can see that the definition of this N is basically the CDF, the cumulative distribution function for the standard normal um, random variable basically. And once you get the price of a call option, then actually we have a so-called uh, put call parity, uh, which also uh, comes from the no arbitrage condition. So once we obtain the call option price, we will uh, automatically getting the put option price from this parity. So uh, there are a few details of this model, of course. For example, um, uh, you might see that everything in this uh, call option pricing formula is actually independent from the uh, physical measure of the underlying stock price process. It's because the Black-Scholes model is built upon the uh, no-arbitrage arguments. And similarly, the put-call parity holds, uh, again, uh, because of the no-arbitrage arguments. And you can, you can construct two portfolios. And here in these two portfolios, one of the portfolio, uh, you can look at to the uh, left-hand side. So basically, this C is the dividend uh, of the stock, underlying stock. If there is no dividend payments of the stock, then this C is gonna be just zero. So you will have this whole term equals to one in that case. And basically if you have a put option and call option at time zero, the right hand side is basically you have um, a de deposited amount to the bank, right? Which is, uh, which is equal to this quantity. And you can compare this portfolio, which is the call option price, this um, amount of money deposited in the bank, versus the second portfolio in this case would be the put option plus the stock that you purchased at time zero. 
So by comparing the value of these um, two portfolios at the maturity, you will realize that they are equal. And therefore, by no arbitrage principle, time zero value of these two portfolios must also be the same. I will not write this explicitly. This is something extra. And if you are interested, you can easily find more explanation about the put call parity. So, thank you.